Hello and welcome to Eye on Africa. I'm Clarisse Fortuné, our top stories. A face-to-face -face meeting is agreed between warring parties in Sudan, but Army Chief Abel Fattah al-Burhan and RSF Commander Mohamed Abdan Dagalo are yet to make the first move towards an unconditional ceasefire. Sanctions stay in Niger, but ECOWAS says they could be lifted as soon as a short transition towards civilian life is reached. And just days before the elections in the DRC amidst insecurity in the eastern part, President Chisekedi held a campaign rally in Goma this weekend. He told them he was still the man for the job. After eight months of fighting, Sudanese rival commanders El Burhan and Hemdeti have agreed to a one-to-one -one political dialogue. A meeting organized by the East African bloc, IGAD, along the United, with the United States and Saudi Arabia. The goal is to mediate an end to the conflict, which has killed more than 12,000 people and displaced more than 6 million. The mediators said the warring parties have reached an agreement, but it still hasn't been confirmed by any of the military rivals. Bastien Renault reports. Most of the region's head of states were in Djibouti to attend this very important summit to find solutions to the crisis in Sudan. Among them, General Burhan, the head of the Sudanese military, who is also the de facto head of state of uh, Sudan. And according to a statement published by the AGA, the Intergovernmental Authority on Development, which is a, a regional organization promoting peace in uh, the Horn of Africa, uh, General Burhan agreed on an unconditional ceasefire, and he also agreed on a meeting, a one-to-one -one meeting with General Hemeti, the head of the Rapid Support Forces. Hemeti was not there during the talks because he's not a head of state, uh, but he had a phone conversation with uh, the different head of state that were there in Djibouti. And according to the final communique uh, from the summit, he also agreed on a ceasefire and on a one-to-one -one meeting with uh, Buran. So this uh, meeting should be organized within 15 days, according to a diplomat that was there during the negotiations in an unknown location. And about uh, the ceasefire, well, it's very difficult to say at the moment if it's going to be implemented, because uh, there's been several attempts during the past months and the war is still raging in uh, Sudan. So uh, many people in Sudan do not believe uh, that it will be implemented anytime soon. The fighting continued this Monday in uh, Sudan. And on Sunday, a convoy of the ICRC, the International Committee for the Red Cross, was attacked in Khartoum as it was trying to evacuate civilians uh, from uh, Khartoum to Wad Medani, a city located uh, east, at least two people were killed, seven were injured, including three members of the Red Cross. But in, in a statement, the Sudanese army said the meeting with Dagalo was conditional on a permanent ceasefire and withdrawal of RSF troops from the capital Khartoum. And meanwhile, the RSF said its acceptance on the meeting was on condition that Buran did not attend in his capacity of head of state. West African regional bloc ECOWAS is maintaining its sanctions against Niger. That's what was decided on Sunday's ordinary session in Nigeria. But negotiations are still on the table. Benin, Togo and Sierra Leone are to engage with Niger military regime to discuss transition and other conditions for lifting sanctions. Lucas Philip explains. No surprises, but disappointment for Niger. ECOWAS said it again, sanctions won't be removed until deposed President Mohamed Bazoum and his family are released. He's still detained in his residence uh, since uh, July's coup, uh, but talks are not over. Sierra Leone, Benin and Togo are now in charge of negotiations between military junta and ECOWAS, but that type of process could go on for a while. We hope that authorities will collaborate with food traders to reduce prices and take off the burden on people's shoulders. People are suffering from ECOWAS economic sanctions. The situation is really difficult for families, especially for those who don't have food businesses. Today, if you order something from Lome in Togo or somewhere in this area, that's going to take time. So we're really impacted. But we will stay strong because we love our country. We will take on this heavy burden for our country.
even if military general Abdouhaman Chani is leading Niger with a new government for months now, ECOWAS refuses to acknowledge new authorities. Yesterday it was a former Prime Minister Umudu Mamadou who represented Niger at the ECOWAS session. Niger is left in a state of economic limbo in which no real transition process can begin. And in Mali, the United Nations flag has been lowered on its headquarters in Bamako, bringing to a close 10 years of deployment. The pullout was ordered by the country's military leaders. MINUSMA has for the past decade maintained around 15,000 soldiers and police in Mali. Just days before the Democratic Republic of Congo is due to hold elections, the country is facing many challenges, including violence in the eastern part of the country, a region feeling left behind by the state and criticized for his inability to tackle insecurity in North Kivu. President Felix Tshisekedi held a campaign rally in Goma this weekend, and he said he was still the man for the job. Laurent Bestesche has more. In the Kanya Ruchinya camp in eastern DRC, Families displaced by violence in North Kivu were doing their best to get by. Above them, a giant poster encouraged them to cast their ballot for Felix Chisekedi in the upcoming election, but many were feeling let down by the president's failure to tackle insecurity in the region. Over the past five years, the president has made a lot of promises. Some of them have been fulfilled, but others have not. Now we hope that whoever is elected will be able to put an end to this war. Since launching a fresh insurgency in 2021, the M23 armed group has seized large swathes of territory in North Kivu, nearly encircling its capital, Goma. And the intervention of the regional East African Community Force as well as the presence of MONUSCO peacekeepers, have failed to make an impact. Appearing in Goma for a final campaign rally this weekend, Felix Chisekedi sought to convince voters to give him the opportunity to finish what he started. On the 20th of December, I need your votes so that we can continue to fight to liberate our country. I promise you that this fight will continue we will rid our country of the M23 terrorists. Rampant insecurity in North Kivu has also thrown the electoral process into turmoil. Many internally displaced citizens haven't been able to register to vote, and polls have been scrapped in the Masisi and Ruchuru provinces, where the M23 is still present. And many internally displaced citizens haven't been able to register to vote. Nearly 40 million Congolese are to go to the polls for the next presidential elections. Voting cards were distributed several weeks ago, but many have since become ineligible. The Electoral Commission has opened distribution centers to deliver new replacement cards known as duplicates, a delay considered a setback by the opposition in an electoral process that has already been heavily criticized. Aurélie Bazara Kibangula, Emmett Livingston, report from Kinshasa. The queues are long and you have to use your elbows to force your way into this branch of the Electoral Commission. Would-be voters are coming here to get their replacement voter cards. Because they were poorly printed, photos, names and identification numbers have been wiped from many of the originals. The problem is doubly serious because in the Democratic Republic of Congo, most people use the voting cards as their primary identity documents. We came to get a duplicate so that it would be more practical, so that the details would be clear and so would my identity. In response to huge demand for new cards, a waiting list system has been set up. We've adopted the system, otherwise we'll be overwhelmed. We have around eight to 900 requests a day. All applicants have to come to a branch in person to request a duplicate by filling out a simple form. La ville de Kinshasa. The eligible voter card is stapled to the application form and then it's off to the computer room where a new card is printed in a matter of seconds. The CENI says it's impossible to print the same card several times because each citizen has a unique identification number recorded in the Electoral Commission's database. Sometimes there are several applicants who come and we look at the card and the date of birth, which will really tell us who the owner of the card is. There are about 44 million voters on the electoral roll. With less than two weeks to go before the elections, the Electoral Commission wants to reassure everyone that they will have legible cards on polling day. 
As the president of the commission said, the aim of increasing the number of duplicate issuing points is to enable every Congolese citizen to exercise their right to vote on December 20th. But for the political opposition in the country, this printing of replacement voter cards is a sign of fraud. Since the start of the electoral process, opposition politicians have denounced the CENI Commission for lacking transparency. And Senegal will have to wait until February for its election. But this Monday marked the opening of a two-week window for presidential hopefuls to submit evidence of their eligibility to the Constitutional Court. The event was widely followed in the local press as it gives an insight as to who could end up on the next ballot. Sam Bradpiece was at the court this morning. Some 200 people have officially expressed their interest in running in the presidential election in Senegal in 2024. In order to do so, they must prove that they are eligible. And in order to do that, they must submit their dossiers to the Constitutional Court some 200 metres behind me. The eligibility criteria are very strict. Candidates must have given a €46,000 deposit and they must have collected 47,000 signatures of support from members of the public. If the criteria are strict, it's because they are aimed at uh, kind of weeding out non-serious candidates. In the 2019 presidential election, only five candidates had their dossiers validated by the Constitutional Court and were able to run in the election. Thank you for watching Our in Africa. Stay tuned for more news. A few months ago, Marie was born. Her birth brought up many questions that I just couldn't keep to myself. Questions about my Algerian father, who was the son of an Arki. Je suis à la rencontre un petit peu des gens qui ont vécu ici, puis dans le camp. Je peux pas vous poser quelques questions. C'est dur à expliquer. C'est sûr que moi j'ai déjà du mal à l'expliquer à mes enfants. Si c'était le pire, le camp de Bias c'était un hôpital psychiatrique à ciel ouvert. Les bâtiments ressemblaient à des bâtiments comme dans les camps de concentration. On nous a cachés, on dirait qu'on avait la peste. Parce que M. de Gaulle, il nous a mis le couteau du FLN sous la gorge. J'ai fait né Marseille. Je ne peux pas. I'm sorry, Granny. Forget about it. 